I am going to just reflect a little bit on the last two days, and I'll try to get through it. <laughs> um, there are a little bit random thoughts um, just sort of pulled together backstage um, just to help us sort of wrap up this day. Um, first one actually is uh, that it means a lot to me that the city that I live in was in the program this year. Um, I never thought... <laughs> uh, I was going to talk a little bit about my own experience backstage. I decided not to talk about it. No, I'm kind of pivoting back towards it. But I never thought when I started Code for America that it would actually have an impact on the place that I live. But it was, I think, my secret hope. And having those fellows on stage and Libby and Nicole and Karen uh, and knowing that it had an impact on where I live just meant a lot to me. And um, thank you guys for that. Oakland! Oakland. It's, it's, it's hard. All this is very personal. Um, the first thing I just wanted to reflect on really is that uh, this is an amazing AV setup. We have done these unbelievably great talks. They're very polished. There's sort of a bow on every little uh, story that the fellows and their city partners and the brigades have brought to this stage. And we do that intentionally because um, it makes great videos and then you can go share the videos. And that's part of what you're supposed to do. These stories have an impact far beyond this room. And so uh, when you get out of here, they're all going to go up online. Send them to your friends. I will be sending the video of Mike Bracken's speech to every single person I've met in federal government as soon as I get off stage. Um, <laughs> But actually, what I'm here to say beyond that is that the polish of, those of these talks, which I'm so proud of, nice job, everybody, um, does not reflect the messy human process behind those outcomes. And I just think it's important to honor that because we've all had these messy years. Um, I'm in my own fellowship year, as you know, and it's messy. Uh, and there's conflict, and teams come together, and they fall apart, and they have failures and they have triumphs. Um, and that's important for you all to know because that is normal, that is how stuff happens. And a lot of you in the audience are in cities. Um, they're gonna be in the 2014 program or the 2015 or 2017 program. And fellows, same thing. Looks great when you're up here. Know that it's a little different when you're making the sausage. But it's all good, it's all really good. Um, I also wanted to reflect on sort of the outcomes of Code for America. It's one of the questions I get asked most often. How do you measure your success? What is Code for America being held accountable to in terms of outcomes? Um, and so we actually do have a very formal set of outcomes. Um, a lot of it is driven by our work, um, as Abi had said, with the Omid Yard Network, particularly with Stacey Donahue, who truly has pushed our thinking on this. Um, and we measure ourselves against things like structural changes in the governments that we work with, the reuse of the applications that the fellows do, not the actual number of users, but whether it gets reused, the data sets that are opened, the growth of the network, in other words, the growth of everyone who's involved. So there are all those things that I think are the right measures in a lot of ways. They'll change over time. Um, but I'm thinking about these emergent outcomes, the ones that you can never really capture. Uh, and yesterday, uh, during a moment here at the conference, I flashed back uh, to a moment in the office last year, the 2012 crew, uh, when I went into the women's bathroom and one of the fellows was there and she was visibly shaken and nervous and not having a good day. And I took, said, you know, let's, let's go talk what's going on. And I took her outside and she was just really feeling the pressure she was feeling like she couldn't live up to the expectations that, she, that, that her city partners had for her, and I guess we probably at the at Code for America had for her. And I could, I could, just re I could really feel for her, uh, and I remember her saying, it's like, I, they, they, they think that I can solve the city's problems. I'm a graphic designer. <laughs> <laughs> and I gave this person a hug, and I said, I know, I feel that way a lot too. Good luck, I love you. And, you know, <laughs> I'm not even a graphic designer, and I feel that way. And the next day, I saw her at the office, and she was fine, and she was like back on her horse, and she was going, and the end of the year, they, she actually did kind of solve the city's problems. And then she founded a startup uh, that continues to solve city's problems. And you saw her on stage yesterday. Her name is Alex Pandel, and she's leading a startup. She is leading a civic ecosystem, and she's asking you all to be involved with what she's doing. Um, yeah, Alex, way to go. That, you can't capture those in metrics necessarily, but all of you, she is one of many, many 
fellows, brigade leaders, city partners, who go through this sort of this transformation of having to live up to the expectations of a community. And I don't know how to put a number on that, but I know that's part of what we're doing here. And I just wanted to reflect on that. And I wanted to just say again for all of you, particularly for 2013, because I feel so bad for not being here for most of it, how proud I am of you guys, all of you. Um, I wanted to speak a little bit to the other question we hear a lot, what's next? Um, uh, that's on everyone's, uh, everyone's lips. Um, you know, there's, there's this conference here, right? And then there's the, uh, the conference where the food is, because it's just like a party. You know, no matter what great, uh, you know, how much you dress up your living room and your deck, everyone hangs out in the kitchen. So there's all the, conf the conversations that are happening out there, and everyone's saying, okay, you know, what, what's next for Code for America? I think, you know, we, the last couple of years have really been experiments. Um, but we're getting to the point where these experiments have data coming out of them, and we're getting to the point where you can start to see the patterns in those experiences, uh, experiments. And one of them, obviously, is this idea that they're starting to show that we can go broader and we can go deeper. And that means um, broader in the sense that we are taking this, we, not we, everyone, the people in this room are taking it to countries around the world. So code, this is really the first year Code for All is getting off the ground. A huge shout out. You can, you can feel the energy, right, from uh, the Code for Japan and Code for Ireland, Code for Caribbean, all these people here who are so excited about it. Um, that's one of the ways that it's gonna grow. It's not also about going broad, it's about going deep. So David had this amazing um, framework for us this morning that I hope we all get a lot out of it, and part of it was the stack. We're going deeper down into the stack, into the nitty gritty of how government works. Um, but there's another sort of um, orthogonal way of looking at that from uh, these problems like parking or potholes to problems like people getting food or people staying out of the criminal justice system. Um, so we're also going deeper in that sense, deeper into what's really important in people's lives. Um, and that conversation in the room with all the food over and over again is, this has been so great, how do I sustain this? Um, we've started answering that question through the additions of these programs. The Brigade is clearly a way that we do that. The Peer Network, the Accelerator, having companies with sustainable business models that can help you sustain it. But we're at the beginning of that, and we're going to keep working on that and trying to make these puzzle pieces fit together and hope they're the right puzzle pieces and that they do lock. Um, and we don't know yet. You're going to help us figure that out. Um, I had a great conversation with Bert Lum, who's the brigade captain in Honolulu. They have the opposite problem. Instead of the city government saying the fellows are leaving, how do we sustain it? Um, the city kind of stepped out after we had the fellows in Honolulu last year. The mayor changed over, and the new mayor hasn't supported Honolulu Answers. A lot of the stuff, amazing stuff that those fellows did is being supported by Bert and his folks. And Bert's here saying, Ohana API, it's a Hawaiian word. We want to have it in Honolulu. We want this. We want all these other things that we're seeing out of the program here. So he's the, he's the vector for spreading that to that community there, and they'll be sustaining that work despite a lack of, a somewhat lack of support from, the, um, from City Hall. Um, I hear over and over again that this still feels like a family, and I love hearing that. Um, we're going to grow, and I hope that you will all help us figure out how, when we're even bigger next year, it still feels like a family. It's hard to scale networks, but I think we'll get it done. Um, we're also, when we grow, I want us also not to lose the nuances of this community. We have an ability to hold contradictory ideas together at the same time. Data and emotions, stories, numbers. Um, there's a lot to that. And as we grow and we become more visible to the outside world, let's not be reduced to taglines. Let's hold that ability um, to have contradictory thoughts. Um, I think also as we grow every year, we need to make it a practice to reflect on the values of this community. They're a very um, flexible and elastic set of values. I said before, I think they can reflect pretty much any political viewpoint. The values are a little bit deeper than that. And the process of telling our stories is also the process of, of, of demonstrating our values. Um, first one that comes to mind if you look at today has been empathy. Uh, it's empathy for the people in our communities. Um, Sarah from uh, FAF talking about child protective services. When Jake uh, demoed promptly uh, with the city of San Francisco, he didn't just talk about the text message. He's talking about the experience someone has when they can't bring the food home to their family. Um, 
loved the stuff from City Voice. You hear someone saying, yeah, I know about that abandoned property. That was my grandfather's. Um, Beverly Johnson was um, brave enough to share her experience with food insecurity in her own family. But it's also this empathy of um, being inside a system or outside a system, right? We're a place where people outside of government have empathy for people who are working inside it and vice versa. Um, inclusivity, major value for this community. Um, Dan uh, O'Neill, Civic User Testing Lab, if it doesn't work for you, it doesn't work. That's including people. Um, Clearly, I think the thing we're known for more outside, efficiency, optimization, I don't know if data is a value, but if it can be, we're gonna claim it, data. Um, you know, Ezra talking about making the process, um, uh, putting people in programs in the criminal justice system more efficient, I mean, there's dozens of examples of that, but that's clearly a value. Um, you gotta love uh, how Street Mix demonstrates this value that I call hackability, the belief that the world around us is not a given, that it's changeable but so many other examples of that. And of course, the value of community. And one of the ways that was expressed here is this um, notion that we're gonna lead the country from the values of our communities. It's the local level that's gonna be leading. Uh, and Jennifer Bradley did such a great, um, uh, great job of expressing that, talking about the Metropolitan Revolution. Um, Everyone calls innovation a value. We think it's sort of an over, I think a lot of us think it's an overused word. Maybe we'll sort of reframe that around the pivot and claim what Clay Shirky said to us this morning. The biggest resource you have is the ability to change your mind. Um, he also talked about this idea that it's not what you do first that matters, it's what you do next. And I was thinking about that line um, when Stacy and Clay and others were talking about procurement today. Can you imagine if we tried to get Wikipedia <laughs> out of a procurement process? <laughs> you would never achieve, you would, you would have been stuck forever with Newpedia, which didn't work. Um, all these rules that we're subject to, they lock us out of these emergent outcomes because we're not able to make that pivot. Um, we're not able to get to that Wikipedia. Um, so it's not what you do first, it's what you do next. We know what we're gonna do tomorrow, I hope. I heard a big, loud, uh, lots of noise for people who are staying for tomorrow. I know some of you are going home, but we know that. Uh, a lot of us will be there together. And I think for those of you who are going home, you probably know what you're gonna do next week. At least I hope you do. I hope you're taking some of these ideas and particularly some of these applications and saying, we're gonna have this here where I live, whether you're in city government or not. Um, it's the month or two from now that I think we need to be thinking about in terms of what we do next when you haven't just come from Code for America uh, and you're back at, you know, nose at the grindstone. Um, that's when that question of what do we do next, the sustain, how do we sustain this is going to be really real to you. Um, so many triumphs that we see here, but really at the end of the day, that's when you get back and you go, yeah, the problem that we're facing really is enormous. These add up to an enormous problem. And whenever I think about enormous problems now, I think about a certain poem that I would like to share with you. I'm only going to read half of it, and I'll explain a little bit about it. Um, the poem is called The Man Watching by Rainer Maria Rilke. I'll do my best to read it. I'm not the best at reading poetry, but... What we choose to fight is so tiny. What fights with us is so great. If only we would let ourselves be dominated as things do by some immense storm, we too would become strong and not need names. When we win, it's with small things, and the triumph itself makes us small. What is extraordinary and eternal does not want to be bent by us. I mean the angel who appeared to the wrestlers of the Old Testament. When the wrestlers' sinews grew long like metal strings, he felt them under his fingers like chords of deep music. Whoever was beaten by this angel, who often simply declined the fight, went away proud and strengthened and great from that harsh hand that needed him as if to change his shape. Winning does not tempt that man. This is how he grows, being defeated decisively by constantly greater beings. So I don't mean to compare constantly greater beings with things like procurement and citizen engagement, but I think when you add all these things up, um, when you add them all up, um, we're really talking about an incredibly hard job of making our institution serve the need of the needs of the people, and I think that very squarely falls in the category of what fights us is so great. 
So I'm not trying to end on a depressing note, because to me, um, this isn't a depressing poem at all. It's a poem that has very deep personal resonance in history for me. I first heard this poem in 2008 when Tim O'Reilly gave a talk at eTech where he decided he needed to tell his community of hackers who follow him and entrepreneurs that it was time to, as you've heard so many times, to work on stuff that matters. Uh, and this poem is uh, in large part responsible for me deciding to quit my job, um, working with him actually, and found Code for America. Um, it is an enormous job. It is sometimes seems impossible. Um, but what gives me confidence that we can tackle these enormous problems is right around you right now. Uh, look to your left and your right and behind you. Um, when you bring a community to solve the problem, I do think it's, it's, uh, it's solvable. I love that Clay gets up here and says, yes, we're going to fix procurement. We are. And I do want us to rally on that, but I also want us to recognize that that's an angel we're going to struggle with. We're going to keep wrestling this until we get it down. And we're going to come back next year, and we're not going to have fixed procurement yet, but we are going to continue to struggle with it. We're going to wrestle with that angel. Um, there's an old African proverb um, that I spoke about to, again, the first co class of Code for America fellows that says, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Um, so I used that before, I'm going to use it again because I think we have come far together um, and together I hope that we're going to go even farther and that means seeing you again here next year and hopefully seeing you many times in between. So thank you so much for being here, really appreciate it.